Let's uh, turn around to business. Karis Garland joins us for that here in the studio. We're going to look a little deeper at the story of one Rupert Murdoch stepping down. Um, and what that could mean for his media empire. So tell us. Well, it is a sprawling empire. Um, mm. It wasn't in the beginning. It all started back in Australia when he inherited a newspaper at age 22, and then which he built into um, a movie studio, television network, and a host of cable news channels at its peak. His son Lachlan will become sole chair of Fox Corp and News Corp, which have a combined market capitalization of some $27 billion. However, Murdoch told employees that he would remain engaged in the company every day as chair emeritus. Jenny Shin has more. He's one of the most influential and controversial tycoons that's reigned over a media empire for over seven decades. Stepping down as chairman of Fox Corporation and News Corp, Rupert Murdoch is passing the torch to his son, Lachlan, who will take the helm of both companies. For my entire professional life, I have been engaged daily with news and ideas, and that will not change. But the time is right for me to take on different roles. A hero to some and a pariah to others, the 92-year-old is touted as a figure who's shaped the modern era of media, owning hundreds of local and international publishing outlets, including the Wall Street Journal and the New York Post, as well as broadcasting channels including Sky News Australia. The valuation of his holdings totals a whopping $27 billion. With his influence, Murdoch has also become a power player in global politics, holding sway over public opinion. The conservative-leaning mogul launched Fox News in 1996, today's most-watched cable news channel in the United States. But in building his empire, Murdoch has also weathered his share of setbacks, including a debt crisis in 1990 that almost sank the company, and years later a phone-hacking scandal at one of his UK papers. His perhaps biggest challenge came when Fox News agreed to pay a $787.5 million settlement after being sued by voting machine company Dominion over its reporting of the 2020 presidential election. Murdoch will become chairman emeritus of both of his companies in mid-November. Interest rates 14 times straight, the Bank of England has left its key rate unchanged at 5%. Thursday. Policymakers had been tipped to lift borrowing costs, but data revealed on Wednesday showed an unexpected slowdown in inflation. The consumer price index fell to 6.7 percent in August, its lowest level since Russia invaded Ukraine. However, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey says cutting rates would be very premature. I can tell you that we have not had any discussion on the March Policy Committee about reducing rates because that would be very, very premature. Uh, our job is to get inflation down. Uh, you know, as I see it, we've got a big job to do. We've got a, quite a long way to go yet. It's encouraging, but I'm afraid we can't be complacent. And of course, we will watch the evidence very carefully, as we always do. Let's take a look at the trading action on Wall Street now. And the major indices closed lower amid expectations that U.S. and in U.S. interest rates will stay high well into next year. The Dow Jones losing more than 1 percent, the S&P 500 down 1.6 percent and the Nasdaq leading losses down 1.8 percent. Russia says it's temporarily banning exports of petrol and diesel to avoid shortages of at home. The announcement comes weeks after Moscow decided to extend a voluntary cut of oil exports until the end of next year. That's part of a coordinated move with Saudi Arabia aimed at propping up global crude prices. Diesel prices in Europe jumped on the concern the decision would worsen global shortages. And finally, CNBC is reporting that a deal could be near to end the Hollywood writers' strike. But in the meantime, workers are turning to other ways of making cash. After walking off the job in May, writers held a flea market at an L.A. car park. Around 65 people were selling memorabilia, baked goods or household items. One prop maker said his debt had jumped by more than $20,000 after months of no work. I'm guessing somewhere around 60 people or 65 people are selling here today. All in the industry. It seems like the stories of a lot of my co-workers were such that they, you know, have a lot of things to sell, are out of work, don't have a garage or a yard to sell them in. So, cool our resources, you know, Unity Incarnate. Yeah, I hate to think of what I'd have to sell after five months of no work, Mark.
I don't think I've got anything I could sell. Karis, thank you very much indeed. Great to see you. Karis Garland there with all the business.